You are listening to WCAT Radio, your station for quality Catholic programming. Your selected program will begin right after a word from our sponsor, Group M7.com, a web design and hosting company. Log on to Group M7.com today and let them know that WCAT Radio sent you. You know, my finest childhood memories was the Saturday morning movies for about four bits each. My brother and I could split a Coke and a big box of popcorn and watch movies about Tarzan, Jane, and their Amazon River adventures. Well, maybe that's where Jeff Bezos took his name. His Amazon.com is now the largest online retailer in the world. I'm Michael Malfood with Group M7, the oldest and largest website design firm in East Texas. And here's my point. And as usual, it's a good one. If your website is modern and up-to-date, mobile and search engine friendly, it matters not whether you sell a product or provide information about your goods and services, your sales justifiably will increase just like theirs. The world uses the internet. We can improve your website and your email. Look at our giant portfolio at groupm7.com. Since 1995, there's only one web and there's only one group and it's us. It's Group M7. You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Hello, and welcome to the heart of Fiat Crucified Love. This week, we are going to talk about pilgrimages. And I just got back from my pilgrimage to Medjugorje. And so I thought we would talk in general about pilgrimages and then the message of Medjugorje and why it is that... Um, Our Lady of Medjugorje has been so profoundly um, important in my life ever since I was a little girl. And I was going to actually try to sing (laughs) at the beginning, but I actually technically still have COVID. And um, I pulled out my guitar and I tried and the voice is just not coming back. (laughs) So we're going to just say a prayer and skip the song this week. I will spare you. And um, as you're watching this, you can pray that I continue to heal. Um, On my last day of my pilgrimage to Medjugorje, I also broke my foot. So I'm a little, I'm just in this awkward place. I couldn't really even set up um, my statue of Our Lady of Medjugorje or anything because I'm very limited where I can sit with my foot up. This is just my spot. So I appreciate your patience with me. But we can still start with a prayer, and um, then we'll kind of get to the podcast. It probably won't be a super long one this week, but it's better than nothing, right? So the Lord provides in his own mysterious ways. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit and we will be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Blessed Mother, I ask you to come and be in this room with me as I speak, and I ask you to go to each of the people that you are choosing to listen to this podcast this week, and to place your motherly hands on each one of our heads, and to pray over us for the Holy Spirit to help us to hear the message of God's love that he has to share with us, to inspire hope, to feed our faith. We ask you to pray for all of the different concerns and worries that we might have. We want to entrust some to you under the title of Our Lady of Medjugorje. Our Lady, the Queen of Peace, is who you came as in Medjugorje. We ask for that gift of peace, peace in our world, peace in our countries, peace in our church and our cities, peace in our families, and most importantly, peace in our own hearts. And we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I will say that Medjugorje has been present in my life since I was very little. When I was in third grade, um, 
my mother went on her first pilgrimage there with my grandmother and they were gone for 10 days and while they were gone my dad decided that we would pray the rosary every day as a family for them we were used to um, praying the rosary during lent but not usually the rest of the year but my dad said while my mom was gone we would do that and the fruit of her trip was the family rosary when she came home we never stopped and so growing up um you know medjugorje was like this leaven in my spiritual life because that daily rosary came from her messages there. And over the years, I had different siblings and my father that would go back and forth and bring back rosaries and bring back little, you know, statues and um, little books for us and tell us the stories of the visionaries and things like that. And it really um, fed my faith. Um, I didn't go myself until I was at Notre Dame and I arranged a pilgrimage and I led one of Notre Dame students. Um, and it was just a real blessing. And then later on in 2000, it must have been, I went and lived in Medjugorje for three months and I helped a sister there. And every day I would climb one of the mountains and do the way of the cross. And um, it was just, you know, it became my breath, my heartbeat in a way. And I've been back many times since. I, I drove there once from Poland, and um, I've gone back he here from the United States. So, and each time I've gone, there's been a different gift that has come out of that pilgrimage. And yet, it always draws me back to my childhood, which was the first time I heard about Medjugorje. And um, it kind of brings me back to that core of our faith. Um, the messages in Medjugorje really are similar to the messages Our Lady has given in all of her apparitions, you know, of Fatima and Lourdes and Cabejo and Akita and Garibandel and Guadalupe. And she asks for, you know, prayer and for the rosary and for daily mass and for reading the Bible and for fasting and penance, right, and adoration. And um, it's just really beautiful to see how the message of our mother is always the same. It takes, she might wear different clothes in different places according to the culture of the people, right? And she might speak in different languages, but the message is to prepare our hearts for heaven and to draw us to focus back on heaven, even in the midst of the world. And I will tell you just kind of a brief history of Medjugorje was in 1981, on June 24th, there were six children. Um, who saw Our Lady appear on what we call now today Apparition Hill. And um, they continued to have daily apparitions for years. And once a few of them um, had received all the messages that Our Lady had for them personally, um, then they stopped seeing her every day. You know, one of them sees her on Christmas and another one, you know, on the 20, on the second of every month instead of every day. And, but um, the, there are still a few visionaries who see her every day. And it's at 5.40 p.m. in Croatian time, which usually is 11.40 a.m. our time. And, um, you know, Our Lady told them once that, you know, if you were in the apparition room with them and you didn't get to see Our Lady, but she was appearing you would have the same grace as the visionary that you're standing next to, even if you don't see, right? Blessed are those who believe and do not see. But then Our Lady said, you know, even if you're not in the apparition room, maybe they're in their homes and you're at the church. If you stop at 540 and you say a prayer, you have her attention in that same way. And she's looking at your intentions and your, um, your prayers and she's interceding for you. And Our Lady said that you don't even have to be in Medjugorje. And so here in the United States at 1140, if you stop and you join your heart and your prayer to the prayer of all the pilgrims in Medjugorje and to the visionaries, wherever they are, you know, Ivan lives in America now for some of the year and, and Maria, I think, lives in Italy. And, you know, they're all in different places. Sometimes they're out traveling. But at that same time, if you stop and you pray, you have the same grace as a visionary would have. And Our Lady, when she first came, she called herself the Queen of Peace. And that's the title that she comes under. 
And the one thing about Medjugorje, I'll tell you, I've been to Fatima and I've been to Lourdes and I've been, I've been everywhere, you know, like name an apparition site. I've probably been there, you know, in um, Chestahava and Poland and each place you go has a very profound presence of Our Lady, a very special presence when you have a, a pilgrimage site. But there is nowhere on earth I have ever felt the heavenly peace that I feel in Medjugorje. There's something maybe because she comes under the title of Queen of Peace and maybe because she's still coming. You know, it's not an apparition that happened a long time ago or a miracle that happened a long time ago, but it's something that's still ongoing every day. But there is this tangible peace that comes, washes upon you when you go to Medjugorje or you encounter Medjugorje. And my prayer is that by sharing a little bit in this podcast with you about it, that you may feel that peace, that you may experience Our Lady, the Queen of Peace. In Medjugorje, Our Lady said, I have come to tell the world that God exists. That's why she came, is to just proclaim the existence of God. And to some people, they might say, oh, well, isn't that obvious, you know? But people don't live in the world as if God exists. They live their, their own lives focused on their own problems, their own ambitions. And the fact that God exists, that we have a creator who loves us and who is recreating us at every moment, who wants to be part of our lives, um, our ordinary lives as well. You know, that's why Our Lady came, is to remind us of that, that God exists. He is the fullness of life, she said. And to enjoy this fullness and peace, you must return to God. So it's a very simple message that she brings. God exists. And in order to um, enjoy the fullness of life and peace, you have to return to God, who is present at all times. In Medjugorje, there were five basic messages that Our Lady taught. And, um, you know, these were things that I was incorporated into my life at a very young age. And um, the fruit of Medjugorje in my life and in the lives of those I love has been so profound. Um, it's, you know, it makes me not doubt the authenticity of the apparitions. You know, it, the authenticity of the apparitions has nothing to do with even the holiness of the recipient, right? Um you know, when you look at Our Lady of La Salette, um, the bishop approved those apparitions. They were real to those children. But, you know, one of the visionaries went on to have a lot of mental problems. And, um, you know, she isn't necessarily going to be canonized. Um, but the apparition and the message of Our Lady was real. And, you know, in Medjugorje, a lot of times people question um, the apparitions, especially since they're still ongoing and the, the visionaries are still alive. So you can't really say if they're saints or not because they're still living. They can still fall. But the messages in themselves and the fruit of Our Lady's apparition is so profound. Um, I really can't doubt the authenticity. Even when I've seen, you know, the visionaries not always act saintly <laughs> you know sometimes they you know might have a gruff word or something and when that happens um it doesn't shake my faith in our lady because our lady is truly there uh, my mother i know is truly present in a very powerful way and it's interesting when you look at that area of the world the balkans there the people's faith is just incredible Everybody is, all of the, the Croatian people there are Catholic. There's a lot of, there's a Muslim um, presence, especially among the Serbs. But um, the Catholics, even when they went under the greatest persecution, never faltered. Um, they're very, very faithful. And they endured horrendous um, persecutions. I mean, some of Diocletian's persecutions, you know, um, attacked and, and hurt the people that were there. And I don't know the history as well as some people can just rattle it off, but it's really an amazing place because the faith of the people is so living and so alive. And um, to be honest, if a people deserved her presence, it would be the Croatian people 
such a beautiful people. And our lady came and she called it, came to call them to turn back to God. So these are people who already were living the message um, powerfully. They were, you know, going to mass on Sunday and they were trying to live moral lives, but they had lost part of that personal relationship with God. And um, I, our lady wanted to give them that living relationship with Jesus. And so she had five, what they call the stones of Medjugorje, right? Or the five, you know, um, main messages that she gave in her apparitions to teach and to form the people. The first is to pray the rosary with your heart every day. At the beginning of the messages, she just asked the children to pray an Apostles' Creed and seven Our Fathers, seven Hail Marys, and seven Glory Bees every day. Then she asked, you know, that they pray one, you know, decade of one, um, like set of mysteries of the rosary every day. But then at the end, she asked that they pray all the mysteries of the rosary every day. And she asks that they don't only just rattle the words off, right? You know, Jesus said in scripture that, you know, you know, pagans can rattle words to God. But instead, she asks that we pray with our hearts. That's like the main central message. And what does it mean to really pray with your heart? It means to pray with love, to pray with that living relationship of faith in Jesus. It's to pray with um, tenderness and with hope that the God who created you in love is listening to you and will respond back to you. Um, it's a very fa familial way of praying, right? The way that you would have a conversation with somebody in your family who knows you really well is the way that she asks that we pray the rosary, that we really pray with our hearts, that we call on her like a mother, you know? And that's basically what we're doing by saying the Hail Mary over and over again. We're saying, Mama, 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 you know, we love you. Help us. We love you. And so in Medjugorje every day, she formed the parish to follow the messages. Um, and they started to have with the evening um, mass beforehand, um, a time where they would gather to pray the rosary beforehand. And then they would pause at the time of the apparition. And in the early days, the children were in the choir loft of the church and they would have their apparition there. And then they got moved to their homes, but it still stops. So to every day, you know, even today at five o'clock, you start with the joyful mysteries and the sorrowful. And at 540, they stop the rosary and you take a few minutes of silence with Our Lady who's appearing to one of the visionaries somewhere in the village. Then they finish it up and they pray the litany of Our Lady and they pray the prayer, the Vene Creator Spiritus, come Holy Spirit, right? Um, and then they go into Mass. And after Mass, they immediately pray that creed and the seven Our Fathers, seven Hail Marys, and seven Glory Bees that Our Lady originally asked for. And then they usually follow up by the, the Glorious Mysteries. So the entire rosary, or at least those three set of mysteries, are prayed publicly with the parish every uh every day. And then on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, I believe it's just Tuesdays and Thursdays, maybe Saturdays, they have an hour of adoration. Um, they often have healing prayer, prayer of healing over the people. Um, and it's just really beautiful. And you can actually tune in from here. If you're interested in ever praying along with the village, you can go to Mary TV. Dot com And they have a live webcam going on. And this morning I did it, right? I'm at home with COVID. And so I had already, you know, participated in mass on EWTN, but I thought I'm going to turn on the rosary and just sit here. I didn't have a lot of energy. And I prayed the rosary. And when Our Lady appeared, I was able to pray and then to listen to the mass again and to pray along with that. And at the end, when the priest prayed healing prayers over the crowd. I really put my heart on that altar so that I would be the recipient too. It's really beautiful to pray along. But that prayer of the rosary every day and prayer of the heart is something Our Lady asks in Medjugorje. If you don't pray the rosary every day, if you don't pray it in your family, start it, try it. You know, Advent's coming up. That would be a great time to start a new tradition in your family. 
And, you know, if your children are really little and you, we used to pray it with little children. And if you tell little children they have to sit still and be quiet, they will. Children um, behave to the degree that you expect out of them. I will tell you that. But some people don't like to make little children sit still. And then if it's hard for you to do that, then just do one decade. Start with a decade. That would be really pleasing to Our Lady. But I'm telling you from a large family and praying with lots of large families, you can make small children pray a rosary every night. And, you know, the little one-year-old starting to walk might get up and walk around, but you teach the other children to just ignore them and let them be. And um, you can have little two- and three-year-olds leading the rosary. Um, but it's such a powerful thing to teach your children. And then later in life, when problems come, they fall back on that. I remember wayward young men who, when they got into trouble, would say, fall back on praying the rosary, right? People who even sometimes leave the church, when something difficult happens, they pull out that rosary they had when they were little and they pray it. It's a beautiful habit to teach them and to teach them especially to pray with their heart, right? To not rush through, but to really pray as children, you know, sitting at the feet of their mother. The second message of Our Lady in Medjugorje is fasting. And she asks for fasting on bread and water on Wednesdays and Fridays. And so ever since I was very young, I started probably junior high in trying to do that. And then there were times of my life where I didn't eat anything. And there's times I expanded it to Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. But um, there are other times where I'm really active and I can't do bread and water. Um, or I'm sick, like with COVID. I have to have decent food right now. Um, and so Our Lady, you know, asks at least for some kind of penance, right? But she prefers, she specifically it asks for bread and water. And, um, and the visionaries always said, you can have coffee, but I wouldn't add a lot of sugar or a lot of, you know, um, flavored cream to it, you know. Um, and uh, in fact, one of the visionaries is funny. Somebody asked them once, you know, are we allowed to have coffee on fast days? And she said, only really early in the morning before Our Lady wakes up. <laughs> but I think her point is that you're not like fooling Our Lady. You know, you do what you can do and you do it with a heart full of love and, um, and with that proper, you know, um, attitude of penance. And then, um, you know, it's not like what you can get away with. You know, you decide with the Lord what you can do. But you know, our world has really lost that virtue of penance and of fasting. And if you go back to scripture, Jesus said many times that, um, you know, it's prayer and, fa excuse me, prayer and fasting that, you know, will cast out demons and that will move the heart of God most profoundly. When the apostles couldn't cast out that demon and Jesus came down from the mountain and he did it and the, the father of the young man asked, why couldn't your apostles do it? He said, this kind can only be cast out with prayer and fasting. And what Jesus is speaking about is prayer of the heart and an attitude of penance, of, you know, joining a sacrifice to your prayer. It's very powerful. And every apparition that Our Lady has ever appeared in in the history of the church She's asked for prayer and fasting. She has said that with prayer and fasting, you can change the hardest sinners. You can move mountains. Anything is possible with the spirit of prayer and fasting. So if you'd like to try it, like Our Lady asks in Medjugorje, she asks for bread and water on Wednesday and Friday um, and some coffee. <laughs> but um, if you want to start with something else a little bit less, maybe give up meat on those days or something. But... To, you will see a huge transformation in your spiritual life when you add that spirit of fasting to your attitude of prayer. And then the third thing Our Lady asks for is holy confession every month. I would say never go more than once a month without confession. The church says you only have to go to confession once a year and Easter time. But it is such a powerful spiritual practice to go at least once a month. Um, there's nothing that's going to hurt you to go once a week. 
Um, and you don't have to have it be an hour long confession where you go through the details of every part of your life. You know, those are really great graces that sometimes God gives you to have long confessions that really get to the root of things. But your normal confessions of upkeep is just to go in and to tell the Lord where you might have failed in that week or that month and to get that penance and to just continually be trying to, to climb that mountain of holiness, right? Um, confession once a month, you know, it, it's a game changer. It's just a game changer because then you start to pay attention to where you're offending God in a more regular way. And, um, you know, there's a really beautiful practice in the church. A lot of religious and priests will use it. But in the evening to do an examination of conscience, when you do night prayer regularly, it's part of night prayer to do an examine. It's, you know, St. Ignatius of Loyola used to say that, where you take some minutes and you think about where you have failed the Lord of that day and you, you know, pray an act of contrition. And then maybe the ways that he's blessed you or the ways that you've succeeded and you thank him for those graces. Those are really beautiful things. And then it makes that weekly or that monthly confession um, easier because you're in a regular habit of, of, you know, taking a step back and looking, introspecting on, you know, where have I failed God and where have I um, worked with his grace? But Our Lady in Medjugorje asks for prayer with the heart, fasting on bread and water Wednesday and Friday, and holy confession at least once a month. The fourth stone of Medjugorje is Mass, Holy Mass, and at least receiving the Eucharist every Sunday. You know, um, Our Lady greatly encourages daily Mass. Um, Jesus and the Eucharist is our real food. And, you know, I know for me personally, I could much more easily live without food than I could live without the Eucharist. In fact, this last pilgrimage I just got back from, we finally ended up in Medjugorje on a Monday and um, we had been traveling for a really long time and everyone was exhausted and mass had just started at the church. And when we got there, the host said that they would prepare dinner and most of the group, you know, they were ravished with hunger and they went. And I thought, no, I would much rather s still not eat, skip a meal than not receive the Eucharist today. And I dragged myself down and and was able to go to communion. And that food fed me more than if I would have eaten actual dinner that night. You know, the Eucharist is the living bread. It is, you know, the source of everything who we are. You know, we were created by the word and Jesus is that living word made flesh in the Eucharistic bread. And so he recreates us every time that we receive him. He gives us physical strength and he gives us supernatural strength to bear our crosses with him. And we get fortified in the life of virtue. And so it's important not only to go to Mass on Sunday, but to receive him in the Eucharist. And if you have a sin or an impediment preventing you from receiving Jesus, you need to get that taken care of. Go to confession and talk to the priest about, you know, what it is. Maybe you're in a marriage that's um, that's not blessed by the church. See if you can get that corrected or see if you can live as brother and sister so that you can still receive the Eucharist. You want to be able to have that union with Jesus. And Our Lady, of course, um, encourages a daily Mass. If there's any way you could fit that into your schedule. You know, the Eucharist is the center of everything. And to spend a little bit of time after Mass in adoration or to, you know, find a time during the day where you can pop in the church and pray. Those are things that will make you very strong spiritually. And the last, the fifth stone of Medjugorje. So we have prayer with the heart, fasting on bread and water on, Monday, on Wednesdays and Fridays, um, going to confession once a month, going to communion every Sunday, but, you know, daily mass if possible. And the last is reading the Bible every day. Our Lady talks about how, you know, again, Jesus was the word and scripture is, is his word. And so, you know, that living word becomes part of us. Our minds are washed with the mind of Christ when we read scripture. We're like refocused. Have you ever had a situation where, you know, something really bad happens or a crisis comes up and like 
it's helpful when you have the kind of person to help around helping you that can refocus you like, okay, you know, we're in the middle of a crisis, but let's refocus. What's important? What do we need to do? Da, 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 da. And they can see through that problem. You know, scripture helps us do that in a spiritual way where no matter what cross you're carrying, no matter what temptations you have or what sins you're falling into, the Lord can restructure your brain to think like his. And he can strengthen your heart just by those encouraging words of scripture, right? Scripture is given to us to encourage us, to ignite our faith, to enlighten our hope, and to feed our love. And it's so true. You know, just this morning, the first reading at Mass is a perfect example. I am weary. I have COVID. I've got a broken foot. My car was totaled. I'm sitting alone in this apartment for nine days now. My phone hardly rings. I mean, it's just, you know, I can't even go out in the yard because I don't live in a house, you know, and so I have to avoid people. And, um, you know, it's it's a lot of financial burdens. I don't have insurance for these medical bills and I can't get to work. And I don't even know how to pray. All of these intentions I brought to Medjugorje and so much suffering that went along with my prayer and I don't even see the answers, right? I don't see hardened hearts softened and turning towards me. And I don't see, you know, the people being relieved the way I was asking and the miracles with my ministry that I really need. And so I was very downhearted in bed this morning and I opened up my computer for mass and that first reading just struck me, you know? And it's the encouragement that can only come in scripture. And it talked about, I was thinking about that scripture yesterday. I didn't realize it was coming up. But how the Holy Spirit, you know, prays within us in almost in groans and in cries when we don't even know what to pray for. When we're at a loss of words, we're just overwhelmed. The Holy Spirit prays in us and he cries out, Abba, Father. He reads our hearts and he prays for us. And the Father listens to the Holy Spirit praying in us and with us and for us. That's incredible. That was the encouragement, the comfort, the strength, the hope that I needed this morning. And it came through the Bible, through Holy Scripture. Every day when you pray, open Scripture. It can be the readings for the day. You might want to systematically work through one of the Gospels, or it might just be to pray to the Holy Spirit and open Scripture. But you will land on something that feeds you for that day. The Holy Spirit will use your goodwill and your act of reading Scripture to speak to you, to feed you. You know, the Gospel today was enter through that narrow door. And it made me realize how thankful I am for all the crosses that have come towards me because they, they've hemmed me in on every side and made me have to go on a really skinny, tight path, right? But that's the narrow way. That's the way of the cross that leads to heaven. And so it encourages me. Sometimes when I'm just overwhelmed and I'm like, Lord, this is all impossible, I'll open scripture and I'll read, nothing is impossible for God. And it ignites that hope and that faith in my soul. So it's very important to do that. So those are the basic messages of Medjugorje. Prayer with the heart. Um, fasting on Wednesdays and Fridays on bread and water if possible. Um, holy confession once a month. Um, the Eucharist and Mass, right? Especially receiving the Eucharist every Sunday. But if you can get to daily Mass, it's so important. And then reading the Bible every day. And Our Lady also um, asks us to pray for her intentions that she mentioned in Medjugorje. She's mentioned seven different kind of intentions that really specifically need intercession. And she actually assigned some of these to each of the visionaries, right? So like Yvonne, the visionary, is asked to pray for priests, right? I think it was Mariana that was asked to pray for non-believers. Um, or maybe it was Vitska, I don't remember. But um, one of them was asked to pray for the youth, right? So there were seven different intentions that Our Lady is specifically asked for, and I'll go through those with a message of hers for each one. The first is for peace. She comes as the Queen of Peace to bring peace, and she asks us to pray 
for peace. When's the last time you prayed for peace? Peace in the world, peace in your family, peace in your heart. Our Lady says, pray for peace in your hearts, then in your families. And after that, you can carry this peace to the whole world so that you may become makers of my peace in this world. Not only are we called to receive the peace of God, we're called to create peace, to be peacemakers. It's by adding that gentle, that gentle touch to somebody who's suffering or that encouraging word. You know, it's that, that look of forgiveness to someone who's hurt you, the willingness to talk to them, even though, you know, they may have done something even seriously grievous against you, to have that, that spirit of pardon and forgiveness in your heart. We can be creators of peace by being meek, by being patient, by being humble. And then Our Lady asks for us to pray for families, it's interesting, all of the visionaries got married. None of them became religious. And they asked Our Lady, and she said, that's your decision. I won't tell you your vocation. And they, she said, you know, my son would be very pleased if you became religious and priests. But they chose to get, mar get married, and Our Lady blessed those decisions. Holy families are very important in today's world. She said, dear children, I call you to renew prayer in your families. It's a good time to start that family rosary. With prayer and reading the Holy Scripture so that the Holy Spirit may enter in your families, for he is the one who will renew you. So it would be really beautiful to pray the family rosary every night and maybe beforehand read the gospel of the day. Or read, maybe do a scriptural rosary where at each of the mysteries you just read a couple scriptures that pertain to that. So in that way you're answering both of her requests to read scripture and to pray the rosary in your families. But we're not only called to pray in our families, but we're called to pray for families, right? For our families and for all families in the world. So she asks for prayer for peace and for families. The third is for the youth, for all the young people with so many temptations against them. Tell the youth not to let themselves be led astray from the right path. Tell them to remain loyal to their faith. So she asks for great prayers because young people are tempted and they're easily drawn away from God. But it's incredible when you see like the youth gathering in Medjugorje, when you see young people who are actually on fire with God, their fire has so much more energy than even that of an adult. So we pray that the hearts of the young people may be set afire with the love of God. And number four, we're asked to pray for priests. Priests themselves should pray and fast constantly, Our Lady says in Medjugorje. Priests don't need your criticism, but your prayers and your love. She asks us not to criticize priests, but to pray for them and to fast for them, especially when they've wronged you or they're doing something publicly that's wrong. So she asks us to do that. And then for non-believers, sometimes she'll say, for those who do not have the grace to know God yet, right? She says, I desire that you present prayers at the intention of my children who are unaware of my love and of my son's love. For those who do not know her love and the love of her son. We need to remember to pray for them often. And she asks for prayers for the sick. She says, when you have a sick person, pray for my intentions and make sacrifices for my intentions and then I will take care of the sick person. So when we pray for Our Lady's intentions, then she prays for us who are sick or for those that we're presenting to her who are sick. So we want to remember to pray for the sick, but also to pray for Our Lady's intentions and ask her to intercede for those who are ill. And the last are the souls in purgatory. Our Lady said, there are many souls who have been in the purgatory for so long and nobody prays for them. Pray for them at least seven times the Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be, and begin with the Creed. 
So that first set of prayers that she taught to the children of the creed and the, the seven hour fathers, Hail Marys and Glory Bees, she asks are offered for the souls in purgatory. So many souls in purgatory suffer and they don't have any means except for our prayers to help them. And here we're going into the month of November, which is the month of the holy souls. So it'd be a good time for you, one, to start the family rosary, two, to read scripture along with it, and three, maybe offer at the end of the rosary special prayers or offer the rosary itself for the souls in purgatory, right? So those are the messages of Our Lady of Medjugorje. You know, there's special places in Medjugorje when you go on a pilgrimage um, of particular grace, right? And it's interesting, the catechism says pilgrimages evoke our earthly journey toward heaven. And they are traditionally very special occasions for renewal in prayer. For pilgrims seeking living water, shrines are special places for living the forms of Christian prayer in the church. So there's something very important about being a pilgrim and physically going to these shrines or to places of Christian prayer. And, um, you know, like the church even here in the catechism mentions it. To be a pil We're all pilgrims in life. You know, we're all on a journey towards heaven. We're all, you know, pilgrims from the baptismal font to eternity when we die. But during life, there's a time where we take physical pilgrimages, which is traveling, setting aside, it's a form of prayer, setting aside a certain amount of time to go to a particular place and to offer that as a prayer. And there's great graces that come with that. And so people go to Medjugorje, like I just went. And when I went, I wrote down a whole list of intentions and I carried them on me the whole time. And I told Our Lady, this is why I came. These are the intentions I'm offering, these 10 days of sacrifice and prayer and love for these things, right? But in Medjugorje itself, there are particular special places that people like to visit, right? Even within just the whole village. One is the parish church. And, you know, for many years, it's kind of the central of everything because the Eucharist is there, Mass is there, the evening prayer service is there. And for many years, the children had their apparitions up in the choir loft, you know? That's where they ran to Father Yozo for protection when... Um, the communists were after them and they were, you know, the visionaries in Medjugorje were greatly persecuted by the communists. Father Yozo was thrown in prison because he protected the children and he was there for years until so many miracles were taking place from his cell that they let him go because they thought he was more dangerous in prison than he was out there. <laughs> But the church itself in Medjugorje is a place of great grace. And then behind the church, there's a resurrected Christ. There's a Christ, but the cross is on the ground and he's standing. He's, you know, standing up like that. And he drips oil almost continually. When I was there, he was weeping oil. And many, many healings come from that oil. So it's a place that if you go to Medjugorje, you definitely want to visit. Um, there's Apparition Hill, which is the hill where the first apparitions took place. And there's um, stations of the um, rosary on the way up. And it's a difficult climb. The Mount Krizovic Cross Mountain, which is the other mountain that people climb, is by far more difficult. But Apparition Hill is not easy for, you know, somebody not steady on their feet. But it's really powerful to go. And sometimes you'll see pilgrims going and climbing up barefoot. And um, partway up the hill, there's a cross. And I remember healings take place there. And I think Satan attacked somebody maybe or something at that place. And then Our Lady came and appeared and defended them. But I don't remember the whole story. But I remember that there's something with spiritual warfare powerful there. Partway up Apparition Hill. And then you can get to the top and there's a statue of Our Lady and just the presence of her love washing over you. And if you can't physically get to Medjugorje, go to MaryTV.com and they have a webcam on the spot of Apparition Hill. And it's a beautiful place to place your heart, you know, at 1140 Eastern Time, which is 540 in Croatia. Um, when Our Lady's appearing, to just place your heart there on the apparition hill where that first apparition took place. 
Then kind of down at the bottom of that hill, if you go down kind of the backside, there's a blue cross and many healings take place there. And there was an apparition there, I think when one of the children was running away once. And um, many times the visionaries will go there, you know, at night and have an apparition at the blue cross. Um, and so it's just a place of great grace. And then, you know, right there by Apparition Hill is Vitska's house. She's one of the visionaries. And she doesn't live there anymore, but she had thousands of apparitions in, um, you know, the little bedroom there that's now like a chapel. And her house is open for pilgrims to be able to go up and to visit and to sit in that room where Our Lady appeared so many times and to pray. And many, many graces come from, from visiting her house. Um, and kind of on that road, if we're still kind of on that same area of Medjugorje, you can go down and a lot of times they'll take pilgrimages to visit um, Chinakalo, which is a place of drug rehab. And you'll get to meet with the drug addicts that are converting there. And Chinakalo was founded in Italy, but they're, um, they have a, a big home there in Medjugorje. And um, they're such a powerful um, witness there to hear the witnesses of the drug addicts and how they have come to conversion. Um, and they're living there doing rehab. And right next to Chinakalo is um, the hermitages of the Oasis of Peace. And they're hermits that used to live there. Um, right now, they're just in Italy. I think they had some problems with the bishop in Medjugorje. So they're at their main house in Italy. But if the where the hermitages are is open. And in the back is a chapel. And they have a live um, crucifix of Jesus. He's life-size and it's like skin on his arms and real hair. And they made it according to like the Shroud of Turin and other like visions so that the wounds and his scourges are all exactly the way they would be. And some people say that the crucifix is miraculous because his hair and his toenails, his fingernails grow and they have to cut them. Um, kind of freaks out some people, but I think that the Lord does that just to show that his presence is really, um, you know, powerfully there when we look upon him and his passion and we meditate on the cross, right? And then, of course, there's Mount Krizovic, which is Mount Cr Cross Mountain. And... Um, it's almost like a sign of Medjugorje, you know, you've got the church and then you've got the big mountain you can see with the cross. And in 1933, I believe, um, the people of the village wanted to celebrate a hundred years. Oh, no, it was. Um, 1,900 years since the death of Jesus, because it was in 1933. So they carried the cement. I mean, this climb is brutal. These rocks are sharp. I'm surprised that more people don't get hurt up climbing up this mountain. And um, they carried cement and water and metal and everything they needed. And they built this ginormous crucifix on the top. And many apparitions have taken place of the visionaries up there. And the stations of the cross wind their way up there. And it's just a powerful thing to go and to pray. You have to be careful you don't get hurt. Um, and to get to the top and to be able to pray at the foot of this cross, which really is a symbol of the heritage and the faith of the Croatian people and the people of Medjugorje, um, you know, way before the visions even took place, these people that wanted to honor the cross in such a powerful way. And there's many mountains as you drive through Croatia where you'll see crosses on the top. They love to put crosses on the top of their mountains. And it's really beautiful. So those are some places, you know, within the village that are kind of nice to go. Um, you know, sometimes people will visit, you know, other of the visionaries' houses. Um, there are, you know, other little, you know, there's like a chapel of divine mercy. I think I've never been there. Um, there's a beautiful chapel of the Beatitudes sisters that you can go. And there's an adoration chapel every afternoon near the church. And a lot of other little, um, just personal things. Once you start going, you know, you'll meet people and, you know, a play, an experience will happen somewhere. And then that will be a place that you'll want to go back and to pray at, you know, be and to remember that. Um, but it's just such a blessed place. And, you know, the mountains and the vineyards, you know, 
are just naturally places where you feel the presence of God. But then you have, in addition to that, the apparitions of Our Lady. Um, and it just a supernatural peace that emanates from that place. So here at the very end, I wanted to just share the message from Our Lady for the World on October 25th, 2021, so this week. So once a month, on the 25th of the month, Our Lady gives a message to one of the visionaries for the whole world. And she's done this, you know, from the beginning, that she gives these public messages. But her message from this week is the one that I'm going to share with you. She said, Dear children, return to prayer because who prays is not afraid of the future. Who prays is open to life and respects the life of others. Who prays, little children, feels the freedom of the children of God and in joy of heart serves for the good of his brother man. Because God is love and freedom, therefore, little children, when they want to put you in bonds and to use you, it's not from God. So anything against our freedom is not from God. Because God loves and gives his peace to every creature. And that is why he sent me to you, to help you grow in holiness. Thank you for having responded to my call. So we thank you, Blessed Mother, for being with us in this podcast. We ask that you put your mantle around me and around each person who is listening to this. We ask that you share your peace with all of us, that you who came as the Queen of Peace may place that supernatural peace in our hearts. We ask that you teach us to know and love your son more. We ask you to look at our needs and our sufferings and to answer them and to present them to the Father and to intercede for us. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus, with you, in the Holy Spirit, to the Father. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you for being with me this week. Hopefully next week I can add a song. God bless you. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.